All praise due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his ever glorious book, they were young men who believed in their Lord, and we give them more and more guidance. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that our master, Prophet Muhammad, is his father and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow their path till the day of judgment. The stage of youngness is one of the most important periods in one's life. It is the stage of physical strength, maturity, vitality, activity, given, hope, and openness. There is no doubt that young people are the basic element of any nation, and no one can deny their important role in building homelands and in the renaissance of nations and their progress. The glorious Quran describes the stage of youngness as the stage of strength that comes between two stages of weakness, namely childhood and elderly. The Almighty Allah said, it is Allah who creates you weak, then gives you strength, then weakness after strength. This is why the prophets were always sent while they were young. The Almighty Allah said about Prophet Joseph, when he reached maturity, we gave him judgment and knowledge. This is how we reward those who do good. Allah the Exalted also said about Prophet Moses, when Moses reached full maturity and manhood, we gave him wisdom and knowledge. This is how we reward those who do good. Ibn Abbas said, Allah sent not a prophet except he was young, and no scholar acquires knowledge except in his youngness. We know that when Prophet Abraham confronted idolaters, he was young. The Quran reports this saying, some said, we heard a young man called Abraham talking to them. The Quran also spoke about the acumen and intelligence of Prophet Solomon when he was, st when he won when he was still young, saying, and made Solomon understand the case better. Because of the importance of this period in a person's life, the Prophet, peace be upon him, showed that Allah the Exalted will ask every servant about it in the day of resurrection. This is to encourage people to best exploit this period in a way that benefits them. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, the, fate, the feet of the son of Adam shall not move before his Lord on the day of judgment until he's asked about four things, about his life and what he did with it, about his youth and how he spent it, about his wealth and how he earned it and spent it upon, and about his knowledge and what he did with what he knew. Islam has paid great care for young people and stipulated their rights, stipulated their rights as well as their duties. They have the right to education, guidance, and good preparation. The glorious Quran reported the dialogue between Luqman and his son in which Luqman taught his son religious values and urged him to promote reform and giving. The Quran says, Luk Luqman counseled his son, saying, My son, do not attribute any partners to Allah. Attributing partners to Allah is a terrible wrong. This, is, this was what Prophet peace be upon him used to do with young people. The Prophet, peace be upon him, would pay them great care and was so keen to teach them and implant in their hearts and minds the great principles of religion, love of knowledge, and excellence. Ibn Abbas said, I was with the Prophet, peace be upon him, one day when he said, O oh, young men, I will teach you a statement. Be, man be mindful of Allah and he will protect you. Be mindful of Allah and you will find him before you. When you ask, ask Allah, and when you seek aid, seek Allah's aid. Know that if the entire creation were to gather together to do something to benefit you, you would never get any benefit except that Allah had written for you. And if they were to gather to do something to harm you, you would never be harmed except that Allah had written for you. The pens are lifted and the pages are dried. Having been given good education and proper training, they should be given the right to empowerment and possessions of authority, each according to their knowledge, abilities, and efficiency. This is actually how the Prophet, peace be upon him, did 
For the Prophet, peace be upon him, made use of young people's energies and even gave them the chance to take the responsibility of challenging tasks. To the extent that the Prophet, peace be upon him, entrusted the affairs of his message to young men whose age did not exceed 20. This man is Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam, may Allah be pleased with him whose house was the headquarter for the Prophet and his honorable companions in the very beginning of the Islamic Dawah. In addition, the Prophet, peace be upon him, made Osama ibn Zayd, may Allah be pleased with him, the leader of the Muslim army, even though he was under 18. Following the, foot, the footsteps of the Prophet, peace be upon him, Omar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, used to ask young men to attend sessions he used to hold for the elderly. He even used to consult them about all matters, saying, even though you are young, this should not prevent you from offering your opinions, for knowledge is not confined to the elderly, yet Allah Most High grants it to whom He wills. So it is reported that many young people used to attend his sessions. Abdullah ibn Abbas is a case in point. He used to attend Omar's sessions and give his opinion on different matters. The Omar said about him, he has a truthful tongue and a judicious heart. This was not restricted only to young males, but rather young females have also played an important role in making the Islamic civilization at times of war and peace. For example, Asma bint Abi Bakr as-Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with her, played a very outstanding role in the prophetic hijrah as she used to provide the Prophet peace be upon him and her father, may Allah be pleased with him, with food and drink. Even at times of war, the rule of women was very important. In the battlefields, they used to water soldiers and give them medical aids. For example, Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, is reported to have said, on the day of the battle of Uhud, when some people retreated, retreated and left the Prophet, I saw Aisha bint Abi Bakr and Um Sulaim with their robes tucked up so that the bangles around their ankles were visible, hurrying with water skins. In another narration, it is said, carrying the water skins on their backs. Then they would pour the water in, their, in the mouth of people and return to fill the water skins again and come back again to pour water in the mouths of the people. With that said, I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. <clears throat> all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that our Master Prophet Muhammad is his slave and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his family, companions, and whoever follows their guidance to the Day of Judgment. Muslim brothers, in truth, the duties imposed on young people are many, including fortifying themselves with knowledge and culture. They should not stop learning, for science continuously advances. So our youth have to cope with the, late, with the latest developments and activities. They should also take into account the requirements of the labor market and the needs of the country through receiving training courses and acquiring the necessary experience so that they would be qualified to face challenges. They should understand that Allah did not order his prophet peace be upon him to increase from any worldly matters except knowledge. Allah Most High addressed his prophet peace be upon him saying, O oh Allah, increase me in knowledge. Third, they should be keen on benefiting from previous experiences and beware of self-conceitedness. So, so they should make use of the wisdom and expertise of people of long experience. In fact, relations among successive generations should not be based on exclusion or conflict. Rather, they should be based on integration and mutual advice. So our young people, beware of destruction in corruption, in fulfillment of the divine order, and do not go about the land, for you cannot cut through the earth, nor reach the mountains in height. Fourth, 
they should renew the, their intention for serving religion and nation. Man is actually rewarded for his sincere intentions and sincerity in doing his duties. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, the value of, of an action depends on the intention behind it. A man will be rewarded only for that he intended. Fifth, they should seize any opportunity to, ex to exert more efforts to realize th their goals, taking into account the fact that reaching one's goals needs considerable efforts and that the trust is heavy. This is because the society we live in rapidly changes. Thus, it has no place but for those who exert their utmost and properly carry out the duties assigned to them. So, if we want to turn our ambitions into reality and reach the status we aspire for ourselves and our country, we should exert our utmost. Sixth, they should repay the debt to the country that provides them with education and other provisions. We should be qualified with determination, insistence, knowledge, and creativity. O oh Allah, bless our young people, protect them from all evil, guide them to construct this country and to what realizes the interest of people and the country. O oh Allah, protect Egypt and all other world countries.